Hi there. I'm Bud Ames, an imperial salesman like yourself. I've been doing pretty well, too, but a few days ago, I lost a sale to a Lincoln salesman. Now, this bothered me plenty because I thought the deal was all set. But I see now where I lost out. I just didn't get across all the advantages the prospect would get with an Imperial that he wouldn't get with a Lincoln. I decided not to get trapped like that again. So I did a little investigating on my own, and I found out plenty to tell the next Lincoln-minded prospect I meet. To begin with, Lincoln's three series are the Lincoln, Lincoln Premier, and Continental. They're pretty similar to one another, so I checked their middle-of-the-line four-door hardtop with ours the Imperial Crown Southampton with the Lincoln Premier Landau. A Lincoln has a lot of appeal for buyers in the luxury class. I found that out the hard way. But I also found that Imperial has more of the qualities luxury buyers definitely want but can't get in any Lincoln. Now, these qualities are fairly easy to point out, too. So, what do you say we take a walk around the Imperial, just as you and I do in a quick showroom presentation, and compare it with Lincoln? First, let's look for the differences that a prospect can see at first glance. Then we'll talk about differences a prospect will know about only if we call attention to them. Okay? Well, to start with, notice the smooth, clean lines of Imperial, compared with Lincoln's square look. There's no doubt as to which is more streamlined and therefore more modern to my way of thinking. And then at the front, the Imperial grille is big and bold and massive, with curves that blend in with the rest of the body. But what do you find in Lincoln? Headlights on a slant. You know, a lot of people, if you ask them, feel that this clashes with the design of the rest of the car. And what's more, the parking lights are located where they can be easily damaged. And when you look at the two grills up close, you can see that the Imperial bumper curves all the way back for added front-end protection. The Lincoln bumper bar just curves under partway. Now, this is just a small detail, but pointing it out to my Lincoln-minded prospects can help them see and feel the extra quality built into Imperial. Uh, speaking of curves, here's a typical Imperial exclusive that all our prospects should know about curved side windows that repeat the curved body contours and flow naturally into the roof. This gives a smoother, more finished overall appearance that's important to the man who wants the best. And I also found out that the tempered glass in these windows is about 12 times stronger than the laminated type of glass used in Lincoln. As you can see in your data book, tempered safety glass can take about 1,200 pounds pressure. Laminated glass can take only 100 pounds, and when it does break, it splinters. Now, besides making this safety point with my Lincoln-influenced prospects, I'd contrast the stylishness of the Silvercrest Landau roof available on our Southamptons with the flat, ordinary-looking roof of the Lincoln. True, Continental does offer a retractable rear window, and this has some good points. But doesn't it give a sawed-off look to the back of the roof. And that from the driver's seat, Imperial's rear vision is wide and clear, while Continental's is obstructed by the channels for the retractable rear window. Moving around to the rear of the car, Imperial looks like the thoroughbred it is, with that graceful flight sweep rear deck option, the gun sight taillights, the new rear bumper. Now, these and other details show the lively good taste a man looks for in a fine car. In contrast, Lincoln looks bulky and impractical. Its trunk lid forms part of the rear bumper and actually gets no protection at all from rear-end contacts. As for the inside of the trunk, I found that Imperial has more opening height plus more usable width and floor depth. The spare tire is placed conveniently to one side with the tire jack stored underneath and out of the way. The Lincoln trunk does have a wider opening, but look where the spare tire is. It's hard to get out, and it splits the cargo area in half. The jack is stored right where it can scratch any luggage placed on that side of the trunk. Well, a quick walk around like this naturally sparks a buyer's interest in body features that give him the protection, the comfort, and the style he expects in a fine car. Here again, there's lots to talk about when you're selling against Lincoln. 
In the matter of protection, we all know that the imperial body is solidly anchored to a rugged box girder frame. This shields driver and passengers from side impact. But Lincoln has no frame. Its body is suspended directly on the driveline components. Trade reports say that Lincoln is working on problems with torsional bending and body drum with their design, a worry that imperial owners don't have. In details of body construction, here's a typical difference. Imperial door latches with two heavy pieces of steel form a secure hook and eye interlock that's much stronger and more dependable than Lincoln's plate and gear latch. Safety studies stress the importance of secure door latches, so this small part of the car can be a big selling point with some prospects. Another place where Imperial shows up Lincoln is in the driver's compartment. Imperial has higher and wider front door entrances than Lincoln, making entry and exit much easier. And here is where Imperial can treat the driver to the last word in luxury. Swivel seats that make getting in and out a natural, pleasant movement instead of the knee-knocking workout it is with Lincoln. There's more roominess on the inside of the Imperial, too, with over an inch more space between steering wheel and the seat cushion and back. And there's more headroom, legroom, and shoulder room. This gives the feeling of spaciousness in the front compartment that a fine car buyer expects and has a right to expect. What's more, Imperial adds other luxury touches to the front seat, like this center armrest that Lincoln just doesn't have. While driving, the owner of an Imperial has better visibility at eye level where it counts because of more glass area all around. When the weather gets bad, he has electric windshield wipers that are steady and strong, instead of Lincoln's outdated vacuum wipers that tend to slow down when they're needed most, such as in passing and hill climbing. Another reason why driving an Imperial is so much more pleasurable is the beautiful simplicity of everything the driver sees or touches. Like the steering wheel, for instance. A single sturdy crossbar gives a full opening above for reading the instruments at a glance. Practical modern design like this, coupled with such niceties as soft padding of the crossbar and thumb indentations on the rim, these appeal to the sophisticated tastes of fine car buyers. And the contrast is obvious. Lincoln has a complex steering wheel that interferes with instrument readability and has no padding. On the left, it has the ordinary type of turn signal lever, and it uses the outmoded hand lever and quadrant type of transmission control. Compare this with Imperial's modern controls, push-button torque flight, and upright turn signal lever on one side of the wheel, and push-button controls for heater, defroster, air conditioner, and radio on the other side. This arrangement makes driving easier and safer by letting the driver give more of his attention to the road. The Imperial instrument cluster is graceful and well-balanced. It gives the driver a feeling of quality and style. It simplifies driving by organizing all the controls so they're easy to reach and easy to use. Lincoln's cluster is functional. You can read the dials. But there's been no attempt to make it beautiful or even easy to use. The light switch, for instance, is under the steering wheel, way over next to the steering column, a frequently used control hard to get at. And there are other differences in the driver's compartment, too, small in themselves, but adding up to quite a bit. For example, Imperial has foam rubber padding at top and bottom of the instrument panel for greater luxury and safety. Lincoln pads only the top. In the rear compartment, Again, we offer more comfort with door openings that are considerably higher and interiors that have more headroom. So, just because Lincoln is a little longer on the outside doesn't mean that it's more comfortable on the inside. The facts say otherwise. Imperial styling is another inside advantage we have to sell over Lincoln. Look at the sculptured design of each individual seat, for example. Lincoln's interior styling is just like the rest of the car, in my opinion, square and unimaginative. Of course, Lincoln is not unimaginative in its claims. Here are some samples. The suspension system, key to the smoothest ride on the road, superb road car. 
most powerful braking system, performance that's first in the fine car field, a miracle in motion. Well, that's what Lincoln tells its salesmen and its prospects. But let's look at the facts, one at a time, in just a moment. Lincoln certainly is longer and heavier than other cars, and some people think this automatically means a better ride. Well, as a matter of fact, it did. Back in the 1920s and 30s, when wheelbase and weight were practically the only way to get a reasonably bearable ride. But today, it's advanced engineering practically applied to a car's suspension system that provides the smooth yet controllable ride that discriminating people demand. And by far the finest suspension system today is the Imperial Torsion Air Ride for 59, with modern torsion springs in front and leaf springs in the rear, outboard mounted, with the rear axle forward of the spring center and Oroflow shock absorbers. The result? Well, let's get an objective opinion from a recognized automobile authority. The 59 Imperial is the finest engineered car in the world today. It has the best ride, the best suspension, the best of everything from an engineering standpoint, according to Tom McCahill, the country's leading independent automotive expert. And what does Lincoln have? Ordinary coil springs front and rear with conventional shock absorbers. For straight boulevard driving, these give a smooth ride. But as for roadability, well, I'm going to show my next Lincoln-minded prospects the action shots in our bulletin. Then they can see for themselves how Lincoln lives up to its claim of being a miracle in motion. Here's Lincoln crossing an intersection hump at 25 miles an hour. Look at how the front end bottoms, then bounces up with the front wheels off the ground. Not much control there. And Lincoln continues to pitch for several cycles afterwards. Going into a turn at 25 miles an hour, Lincoln starts to lean. This tends to throw the passengers sideways, and in the middle of the turn, Lincoln leans sharply. Coil springs and ordinary shock absorbers just don't have the stability of torsion air suspension. Now, I don't have to make like a test driver to prove Imperial's better ride either, especially to a prospect who has driven a 59 Lincoln. A reasonably good demonstration will do if it includes a few moderate humps and turns taken at moderate speed. As you know, Imperial takes a hump beautifully, with no pitching and bouncing like you get with ordinary suspension. She levels out quickly with all wheels staying on the road for full control. On turns, Imperial shows little tendency to lean and treats passengers gently the way the owner of a prestige car expects them to be treated. Well, so much for roadability and riding qualities. Now, how about brakes? Lincoln has about 4% more brake lining area, about 11 square inches to be exact. But it needs more because it's a heavier car. And there's a lot more to brakes than just the amount of lining. Here's what I mean. Imperial total contact brakes bring the entire brake lining into contact with the brake drum under even pressure. This gives total contact for safe, sure stopping and longer brake life. Lincoln brakes provide only partial contact with slower, unpredictable stops and uneven lining wear. On front brakes, Imperial has two cylinders which divide the work evenly between the two shoes so that each does 50%. The result, more even braking effort and more even lining wear. Lincoln has only one cylinder. Stopping effort is divided unevenly between the shoes, 80 and 20 percent. This is less efficient and dependable and causes uneven lining wear. And what's more, Imperial has bonded brake linings while Lincoln's are riveted. Since bonded linings last longer, they require less frequent replacement. And here's another plus that I can talk about from the data book. Imperial's parking brake is the most powerful in the industry. It's a separate braking system and is not connected to the regular brakes like Lincoln's. Because it is so powerful, the brake needs no help from a park position in the transmission as Lincoln does. And of course, we all know the advantages of safety rim wheels, another imperial advantage that you just can't get on Lincoln or Continental. 
When you boil it all down, fellas, Imperial is a much safer car than Lincoln because it's got more stopping power and better control of that power. And as for go power, the all-new Imperial engine produces the same horsepower as Lincoln's, but with less size and weight. In other words, it's more efficient, better engineered. Its power is put to better use, too, thanks to our torque flight transmission. Imperial's breakaway ratio, that is, power multiplication at a standing start, is always 5.39 to 1. Lincoln's best ratio is 4.97. And in the ordinary driving range, number two on the Lincoln quadrant, the breakaway ratio is an even lower 3.10. Another reason why Imperial consistently outperforms Lincoln. An additional source of pride to the owner of a luxury car is the optional equipment that tends to customize his car and set it apart from all others on the road. And what do we find? A whole group of options that are not available on Lincoln at any cost. In addition to swivel seats and silver crest Landau roof, Imperial offers the flight sweep rear deck with its sports car flavor. The mirrormatic rear view mirror with its photoelectric cell that automatically dims the reflection of bright headlights from the rear. The autopilot that acts as a speed warning device or takes over speed control on long stretches of open highway, allowing the driver to relax more. And there's the rear window defogger that gives safe visibility to the rear in bad weather. And the instant heater that gives outlet temperatures up to 100 degrees about 30 seconds after you push the button. So you see, fellas, we have a whale of a story against Lincoln and Continental this year. And if we tell this story to our Lincoln-minded prospects, if we let them know where and why Imperial offers them so much more than Lincoln or any other car, then we'll put more of them where they belong. Behind the wheel of Imperial... 459.